Hey there, fellows. All right, we're going to horse around in this one. That's the sort of mood we're in. Now, you'd remember seeing us make prop shafts out of everything from toilet paper to square tube. Mm, I forget what else. Oh, yeah, right, there was also plastic pipe. Or was it PVC? We've tried pretty much everything. Anyway, in this episode, I suggest we revisit the topic and make us a nice prop shaft. You guessed wrong, not from rebar. <laughs> nope, we're gonna be using concrete. <laughs> now, some time ago, we did this video where we filled tires with concrete. And since we had no experience with construction and all of that, we didn't allow it to cure properly. But we're coming into this one with some kind of understanding, so let's go ahead and grab... Some pipe? Weld together a rebar foundation for the concrete. I mean, we've all seen concrete pillars and so forth. And we know that they're always reinforced. So yeah, weld the rebar together. Pour in the concrete. Give it plenty of time to dry and cure. To become nice and hard. And then fit the chef to a car and do some testing. It's all fairly simple and straightforward, and already we know that this will take several days, but we'll do it anyway. Okay, let's make us that prop shaft and try it out then. Wait, have you seen our new Freddy-style t-shirt? If not, hit the link in the description. If you're still here, you should know that aside from a new t-shirt, we offer a lot of other different merch, bearing the Garage 54 logo. Past payment issues have been solved, and now you can send payment for your order even via PayPal. So if you'd like to treat yourself, a friend, or a relative to some awesome Garage 54 merch, hit the link in the description to head on over to our shop. And don't forget to use the promo code for a solid discount. Now back to the video. We make a super heavy prop shaft out of reinforced concrete. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, guys, here is where we're at with this. Wow, this is quite heavy. I mean, this is... concrete at the end of the day. We decided not to add any sand. The composition is good as is. And this took quite a nice shape inside that pipe, as you can see. Except for this spot through which we were pouring it in, where we had to apply some more by hand. As for why we did that, it was to make sure the whole thing was full. The concrete still hadn't dried by then, so I'm sure we got decent enough adhesion. And with it having quite a bit of weight to it, that should make for plenty of inertia. Anyway, now it's all a matter of fitting this to a car and doing a bit of testing. That shouldn't be too complicated. So let's go ahead and slap it on, and then we can head out. Now, I might be mistaken, let me know in the comments if you think I am, but I think that concrete needs 28 or 30 days to get as hard as it's supposed to be. Anyway, a month has gone by, and even if some of the concrete hadn't fully cured, it sure has by now. Like 100%. So let's go do some testing. I've started the engine, and now, as always, I'm going to... 
slowly, carefully. We want the first few meters to go smoothly. I can hear some rubbing. No worries, I guess. We are on our way, though. As always, I'm taking it slow, seeing what the car is going to do. And so far, we seem to be doing all right. Oh, so that's what's causing the rubbing. It's hitting the prop shaft tunnel. Eh, no worries. It'll break itself in eventually, I mean... It is concrete, right? It's rock hard and it'll essentially work as a grinder. Okay, so now that I'm going faster... Listen to that. Now let's check the brakes. They work, that's good. And the door is popping open again. Yeah, that happens on this car. It spins pretty fast, doesn't it? I'm even a bit scared now. But it's all good. I am a bit worried, but screw it. It is kind of weird, though. The pipe we used as a mold was straight, so why is this crooked? It's hard to say. It feels as if... It's only in one spot, though. Very nice. Now I'm giving it a bit more throttle. Indeed. Let's try driving slowly. That needs to be put back in place, though. Yeah, I know. Okay, we seem to have eliminated the noise. Nope, it's still there. There's still a bit of rubbing. Whatever, screw it. Okay, now we're gonna go a bit faster. That vibration is nasty. Yeah, it is completely off balance. The balance is pretty terrible. And it weighs a lot. I think we'd better take it easy. Also, when I let off the clutch slightly, the moment of twisting results in it getting pulled to the side slightly together with the gearbox. And I've just realized there's another problem. Can you guess what it is by the sound? The muffler has come loose. I'd imagine the vibration caused that. Here we go! Holy cow! That is a pretty severe knock. But we're just gonna keep on driving. Okay, now I think we should put it under some proper load. Like, I don't know, find a hill or something? We should have just stuck a self-tapper in there. Nice, we used to have a muffler, but now we don't. Let's go this way. Oh my, something is seriously wrong. You know what that is? I can see rebar. It must have been really struggling going uphill. Yep, that is rebar. A pretty decent chunk has come off, most likely because of the vibration. It is still intact, though. Though it is... jumping up and down. Or so it may seem, because half of it is missing. But no worries, the car is still moving, right? Right, I definitely don't want to give it too much gas. I am sure... We're gonna make it back just fine, though. 
We don't have any other options, since we don't have a spare prop shaft with us. You know, it seems to be... Nope, another piece has fallen off. Now I can see three pieces of rebar. We're on a slight incline, come on, keep it together. There you go, well done. Very nice. Awesome. It's still in one piece. And though bits of it are falling off, it's still intact. Which is quite nice. Terrific. Can you see it? You want to keep going? No, it'll fall apart as soon as I hit the throttle. See all of those cracks? It is still intact, though. While there's concrete between the rebar, it might even hold it together. With there being no cavities... Watch what happens when we go faster. Wow, it stopped rubbing when you got in. Has another piece fallen off or something? Or the body got twisted? What, because you got in? No, it can't be. It is full of holes. And so what? It is made from metal, after all. Or it was, anyway. It isn't rubbing anymore. Oh, there it goes again. It disintegrated once you hit the gas. Oh yeah, it did? I can't see a thing. A bit more to the right. Can you see anything? Oh, wow, holy cow. Holy cow. The whole thing crumbled to pieces. I was only able to see that section. But apparently the destruction started here, and the vibration caused the cracks to continue all the way to back here. So here's what I suggest we do. We see the picture, and this is just... Look at it bending. That has to be making the cracks even worse. Concrete doesn't have any plasticity, and it obviously would have broken given the diameter. The engine does have enough power to get this turning. We should go out and smash the gas and see what happens. Oh, enough already. Okay, and what do we see down there? That the rebar has separated from the extension housing of the gearbox. Yeah, good stuff. It fell into the pit. We should put something under the wheel. That's a wrap. No more driving.
I mean, the boys did do their best trying to weld this on, but that didn't really help, did it? Too bad. But hey, I mean, we had to give this a try. And give it a try we did. This was all right. But that imbalance, man. I mean, this would have been difficult to balance anyway. And I'm not even sure if you can balance something made out of reinforced concrete. My guess is probably not. Anyway, the imbalance is what caused our woes. We were experiencing some pretty nasty vibration. The vibration caused tiny cracks to form, those started to grow much bigger, and then we saw chunks falling off. With the cracks forming, the rebar started to bend, which accelerated the process. And then the whole thing just crumbled to pieces. Which brings us to the conclusion that such a prop shaft isn't viable. So yeah, fellows, there is no use making a prop shaft out of concrete. You won't be able to drive with it, it's not gonna last you all that long. It's just not a reliable thing. And that's all I got for you. We've established that this is totally useless, but you watch us, subscribe, send in those suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.